Hi, I'm Jake Oth with InsoCal Connect, and you're watching Ion Business. Welcome to Ion Business Innovation, where we look at innovative companies, innovative products, and the innovative people. And today we are privileged to have with us Jay Goth. Jay, welcome to the show. Thanks, Shan. Happy to be here. So tell the people in the audience a little bit about your background to get us started. Sure. Uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur. Okay. That doesn't mean that I make frosty flakes. <laughs> okay. I've uh, been always been working for myself. Okay. So you know, I started back when delivering papers like a lot ah, of kids. Okay. Okay. And never really felt like working for other people, so I tried to get around that whenever <laughs> okay. I could. All right. uh, was going to become a restaurateur, but then mm -hmm. uh, got waylaid when a friend of mine uh, asked me to join him in his business venture. And that started my entrepreneurial path. I've been basically on my own ever since. So what was that first business? We were actually, back in the 80s, we were doing uh, child safety. Ah, okay. So all we right. came up with a catalog. Back then, we didn't have all the wonderful technology yep. tools we have today. Exactly. So we did a mail order catalog. We did a lot of education. Uh, we were fairly successful. We sold the business. And I went into real estate. And okay. then I went into financial services. And then in uh, late 90s, I was out here in California, mm -hmm. and we started a company that really caught on. It was called Commonwealth Energy. Uh, okay. We were able to uh, raise about $60 million from private investors, took the company up to a couple hundred million in revenue, went okay. public, and a uh, typical success story. Of course, I don't tell you about all my other <laughs> stories. Right. But it's a long way from delivering newspapers, I'll and say. And since so. then, I've been working with... Uh, entrepreneurs. Okay, well so tell us about that. Now. Tell us about your work with entrepreneurs. Well, right now I am the executive director of a group called InsoCal Connect. Okay. And you're probably familiar with the Connect organization in San Diego. Okay. They were formed back uh, out of UCSD to uh, commercialize technology. Okay. All right. So what we're doing is we're kind of cloning their model and making a few wrinkles and doing that in the Riverside area. Okay. So the Inland Empire is where we're focused. There's a lot of entrepreneurship happening yep. out there. Yep. Not a lot of resources, you know, we're kind of overlooked. We don't yep. have the sexiness of, a, say, a San Diego or an Orange County or a, a Silicon Beach. Okay. So we're in the process of making that happen. I've uh, taken over an innovation center, and okay. we're about to launch that. We're having an open house on June 23rd, which is okay. next week. Okay. And it's going to be very unusual. You know, usually you think of an incubator or an innovation center and you think, okay, you got cheap office space, <laughs> you have some mentors that come in and out, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, some companies are successful, some aren't, and, you know, there's kind of a flow. With our group, what we've decided to do is incorporate a number of different things that can help entrepreneurs. So we've got your incubator. We've got an SBDC on site, we've got SCORE on site, we've got accountants, we've got all the mentorship okay. aspect there, but we've incorporated STEM education for okay. high school kids. Okay. So we've got Code Academy, robotics training, things like that. Okay. We formed an electronics and robotics lab okay. with 3D printers where people can actually go in and make things. Yeah. So now we've got the thinkers, we've got the makers. And then what we did, is very unusual, is we incorporated the real world. Uh, okay. Loma Linda University Medical Center is actually putting a strategy and innovation center within our facility. Okay. So now we have a place where our innovators can come up with solutions to everyday challenges that the doctors see in the hospitals. Okay. 
And with the inventors, they can actually create solutions and beta test them in the hospitals. And then we put in a video production studio right in the middle of the whole thing so ah, that we okay. can get these ideas out to the world. Okay, sounds great. And well, uh, so you obviously uh, have come away through the whole path of diff playing different roles with innovation. So what led you to this interest in supporting uh, a whole educational uh, process and paradigm, frankly? Well, uh, one of my problems that I saw was as a, I'm a, a senior consultant for an SBDC, Tritech mm -hmm. SBDC, yep, and yep. we're a tech SBDC. Yep. And one of the problems I see is no matter how much uh, advice you try and give and no, man no matter how much mentorship, there are al always things missing, whether it's yep. the capital or the opportunity to beta test or corporate development. So what I wanted to do is, is eliminate as many of those challenges as okay. possible. And that's really what drove me into uh, this type of opportunity. So what's the excitement for you with innovation? I mean, a lot of us get into this field and there's, you know, there's the fun of the discoveries and so forth, but you're obviously at the layer above that kind of making it all happen. But where does that passion come from for you? Well, having done it a couple times and having been stymied several times, okay. <laughs> I really just enjoy the, the making things happen. Yeah. You know, that's really it. I, there's nothing better than seeing something grow and seeing people become successful, seeing somebody who's, a lot of times you get somebody who's got a great idea, but they're kind of timid, they, yeah, they're yeah. trying to hold it, and then all of a sudden they're sharing it with the world, and the next thing you know, it's, it's blowing up. Yeah. That's just a great feeling, and I'm, I'm sure you understand that feeling. So tell us about maybe one or two stories of where you went through that process, where you, you, you know, excitement at the start, run into some difficulties of some sort, and then something happens that makes you get through that and reach some level of success, some kind of success. Sure. Uh, going back to my big success story, which was Commonwealth Energy, I'll never forget one day uh, we, were, we were going along, things were looking pretty good, and uh, I walked by my CEO's office and, and saw him uh, sitting there, and his, he was just like head in his hands. <laughs> We've all seen that. And he's shaking his head, and he looks up at me, and he goes, Jay, are we going to make it? And I looked at him, and I said, Fred, I don't know, but we're going to have a hell of a ride. <laughs> okay. And that, to me, that's the whole yep, essence yep. of it right there. Yep, yep. you got to enjoy the journey, and uh, there is excitement in the journey. But yep. Well, let me ask you, is there any particular advice you would give our young entrepreneurs out there about, uh, you know, do's, don'ts, uh, recommendations? Well, one of the things that I see all the time is people tend to build their uh, company on quicksand. Okay. They don't take the time, they don't feel that they have the resources to actually have an attorney, an accountant, a okay. team sit down with them and actually build a solid company that they can grow off of. And then a lot of times they'll take money from friends and family. Yep. They'll put a lot of things together that aren't really, it's kind of loosey-goosey. And then if they're successful, they got to go back and do everything over. So what I really recommend is, first of all, do the job right the first okay. time. Okay. Uh, secondly, don't grow out of your success too quickly. Okay. A lot of times um. people will, will start to catch fire, mm -hmm. and the next thing you know, they throw everything into it. And they don't keep any reserves, okay. and the next thing you know, they grow out of their success, and, and that's an easy way to crash and fail. We almost did that at Commonwealth. Okay. We, we almost fell off the cliff. Now, you mentioned the team, so any recommendations about, you know? One of the biggest challenges that I see today is you get the inventors, and they've got a great idea, but they don't have any business sense. Yeah. And you've got the entrepreneurs who are out there looking for the next big idea, but they're not the thinkers. Okay. These guys need to find each other. Okay. How do you do that? And that's part of what connects about is connecting, you know, not only businesses with resources, yeah. but putting those entrepreneurs and innovators together. So take uh, the university system. You know, tech transfer is a big challenge yeah. Yeah. because you've got all these scientists and they know their, they know their technology. They've got some great ideas. But then they try and either go out and spin it themselves and, and start their own company, and they don't realize that it takes a whole other mindset to build a business. So okay. I think putting those two together, building a solid team, uh, you can outsource to an extent, you know, mm -hmm. that you don't need a CFO right away in most cases. You can bring on, a say, a part-time CFO, but you need that financial guidance, right?
Yeah. And so, you know, build your team carefully. Uh, I've been in a lot of relationships where everything looked like it was going great, but you start getting that tension, mm -hmm. and it's like a marriage. You yeah. know, yeah. you yeah. you don't want to just do a shotgun marriage and then find out that you made a big mistake. It's a lot more difficult disentangling after you're successful. So we've asked you a lot about your process and your and your organization and so forth, but would you like to say any words about uh, one of your leading uh, projects or, or ventures that's coming out of the process? Uh, there are so many. We With Connect, we have a program called Springboard, and that's yeah. like a structured mentorship program. And we have three companies that are about to graduate. They're graduating uh -huh, okay. July 15th, and they're going to be giving their pitches. And they're really different. Okay. So I like all three of them, but for different <laughs> reasons. Like all the kids equally. Huh? Uh, right. <laughs> one one is, uh, is pre-revenue venture. It's, uh, it's a sports-picking marketplace. Okay. So it, it's totally off the wall, all right. but I think they've got a great opportunity. <laughs> okay. The second one is in revenue. Okay. They have large customers. They're a hashtag aggregator. So okay. they're in the social media space, but they have companies like Clear Channel. They've got some big GE. They've got some uh -huh. big clients. That's big. <laughs> but they're still a startup. Yeah, yeah. And so they're very exciting for a whole another set of reasons. Okay. And then finally, we have a software as a service platform that's focused on the autism sector. Yeah, okay. That's got a very clear path. Uh, they're growing nicely. And uh, I like that because it's a model that most investors right. can understand and buy into. So three different companies, yep. totally different, but all very exciting. Well, these companies and all the others are very fortunate to have you uh, supporting them. So it's uh, well, thanks, been a great man. pleasure to have you on it. the show and maybe sharing some of your wisdom with the audience. It's my pleasure to be here. I appreciate your asking me. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate Thank you. It. You have been watching Eye on Business Innovation.